welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I've never been here before. Yeah, it's great to have you. Um, <laughs> we're all big fans of what you do. Well, I'm a big fan of you. Your, your show is fantastic. Thank you very much. Thanks. I'm sitting but, back there laughing. Oh, that's that's what I hope. That's what I would hope. <laughs> um, let's talk it about works. the show, though. Congratulations, season two. <laughs> Thank you. The, this, this show started off in a way that I think very few people could have predicted in, in how it connected. I mean, mm -hmm. everyone assumed because of the cast it was going to be successful, mm -hmm. but a story about domestic abuse and the community where there are lies that are being told doesn't seem like it's going to be as viral as it's become. What do you think the show owes its success to? Well, I think it's sort of a peek behind the curtain about how women really feel. I mean, a lot of us, um, Laura Dern, Nicole Kidman, myself, when we were doing season one, we would marvel at the fact that we actually had lines and scenes with each other. Right. When, um, you know, so much of our early careers had been, we were the only woman on set. So now it was this real exploration into the private lives of, of women, like really dealing with serious issues, whether it was sexual assault or domestic violence, mm -hmm. um, infidelity. We, we kind of tackled it all from a woman's perspective. It, it seems like an everyday world where extraordinary things are happening. That's what it really feels like in this space. And you have all of these women who are interacting with each other. But what's what's crazy, and I, I don't want to spoil what happens at the end of season one, but, but there is a death. We don't know who's killed or who has been killed or why they've been killed by whom. <laughs> but the second season, as we've seen in the clip, the second season, you... Should I tell you? No, don't, don't spoil oh, it. Okay, don't spoil okay, it. Don't spoil okay. it. But, but are you, you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you like spoiling shows. Don't spoil it. I know what happens at the end of Game of Thrones, too. Don't, don't spoil anything. <laughs> don't spoil anything, please. And, and Avengers Endgame. Please, game. please. <laughs> no. Please, we will censor everything. <laughs> but, they but, all die. No. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's not true. You have Meryl Streep coming yes. in for season two. Yes. That I is, know. Yeah, that's like, that's, I mean... It's okay. Does that just take everything to another level? Because you've already got, like, a stellar cast that everyone loves, and then you go, you add Meryl Streep. It feels like that's stacking. That's, like, team stacking. That's unfair. <laughs> Nicole... <laughs> Nicole and I were pretty shocked when she wrote us an email and she said, okay, I think I'll join your show because I think it needs a boost. She was sort of kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we thought it was so great. And then day one, scene one, I had to be face off with Meryl. It wasn't that scene, but it was a very similar scene. Right. And I was like, I, I got so tongue-tied. I was like, ah, bad, 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 bad. <laughs> and I was like, hold on. I had to go behind a curtain and go, okay, you're Madeline, you're Madeline. You're not, you're not Reese, you're Madeline and you're tough. And I was like, okay. Now I got it. And I still went out there and I stuttered a little bit, but, but she, comes, she was very thoughtful. And she, she comes in playing a huge role as well, though, because, because um, we do know that there's a, there's a man who's been killed in season one, and Meryl comes in. <laughs> I'm not spoiling that part, but then, like, Meryl comes in Should as... I tell you who? As a mother... <laughs> no, don't tell us. <laughs> and, and Meryl comes in going, I want to find wh out what happened to my son. And it, it really creates a new dynamic. <laughs> no, I mean... Well, they have no idea who dies now. No, but, but who kills him? You're gonna make me spoil the thing. I feel like I'm trying to avoid the spoilers and you, you're like Jedi mind tricking me into spoiling <laughs> everything. But she, but she comes in and creates a, a, a new dynamic where you now have a world where it's women are who are together and then it's women who are fighting amongst themselves. It really, it really changes the, the dynamic in the show. It does, really. And I think what's really kind of fascinating, too, is because we have multiple generations in, yes. in the the show, and it kind of talks about different waves of feminism and how exactly. different women feel about the response to a loved one being accused of a crime, or um, whether or not her, someone she's related to, is um, <laughs> guilty of a crime. Yes. So, um, and also, what is a mother's love? So it's this fascinating exploration of every side of it. Do you defend him? Do you defend his honor even after his death? Mm -hmm. um, and And... I mean, she was just amazing. And she had so many great ideas, too. The fascinating thing is, like, not only do you get to work with her, but then you get to go and have dinner with her, and she tells you all her amazing ideas. So you're just like, it's incredible. It, it's, it's, it's like it's, a master class. I it, feel really great. I genuinely think the show is going to get even bigger, if that's possible, just, just, just by adding that addition to the show and the storylines. But it feels like this is very much what you are all about right now. You, you have a production company that's been really successful. I, I mean, because it's not just this show, you also have um, Big Little Lies, you also have Gone Girl as well that your, your production company produced. And it feels like the storytelling that you have is, is really in touch with stories about women, but not stories that are for women, stories for everyone, which people, for some reason, didn't realize you could make. Has that been your mandate for the company? Yeah, I think, you know, a few years ago, I just decided I was 
sick and tired of reading terrible parts for women. And, and if it wasn't good enough for me and it wasn't good enough for my, my friends, it wasn't right. good enough for my daughter to be watching how women were represented in the world. So um, I just decided to do it myself and started <laughs> buying books and turning them into TV shows. And um, I just finished one with Jennifer Aniston, which was really great for yes. Apple. And then I'm starting, my next one I start next week is with Kerry Washington, um, based on a book called Little Fires you, Everywhere. You, just, you read like four or five books a month. I read a lot of books, yeah. And then you just go like, I'm gonna turn these into movies. Some of them, not all of them. No, I mean like the ones that you <laughs> that you really love, though. Yeah, it's, it's, the ones I really love. You yeah. just take your passion and you and you create something. Yeah, from because it. I think there's a better spectrum of female the female experience than what we're really seeing in film and television. Right, and right. the great um, the emergence of streaming has made that um, just an opportunity to to broaden the storytelling for women and and for every every person that feels like they haven't seen themselves represented in film. It's a great time to be a creator. People love you because you you represent stories. You are a fantastic actor on screen. Um, you you you're one of the biggest names in Hollywood, and also recently because you've been a face and one of the main um, uh, you know propulsive forces in the Times Up movement. Mm -hmm. That movement gained steam because it was women saying, "Hey, we're sick of these ideas that are happening. We're sick of these these things that are happening to us, yeah. and time is up." When you look at what has happened from the time you were part of the inception and you look at how far we've gotten now, what are you most proud of and what do you still think we need to work on? Well, I think, you know, women need to feel safe in the workplace. And I mean, I think if women in Hollywood are standing up and saying, we don't feel safe, you gotta think about our sisters who are working in the farm lands and mm -hmm. our sisters who are working in the restaurant service or the hotel workers. Um, and I think the thing I'm proudest of of the Time's Up movement is raising $22 million for a, a legal defense fund through the National Women's wow, Law that's Center. <laughs> yeah. So it's, you know, it's not about a bunch of Hollywood women saying, you know, boo hoo, poor us. It's right. actually going, what can we do for our sisters who don't have any legal recourse and how can we use our collective influence to help them? So, and, and band together because we are in this together and the more, you know, we do for each other, the better we all are. Well, I'm excited for everything you're doing on screen, off screen. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Yeah. Wonderful having you. The highly anticipated second season of Big Little Lies will premiere on HBO June 9th. Reese Witherspoon, everybody.